Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Python Guide. Today we're going to talk about simple input and output to the screen. As I've already mentioned in previous episodes, we're going to use the function print. In order to see what arguments this function receives, we can actually type the function name and then add a question mark. This is a nice feature uh, that IPython supplies us, and then press enter. After you press enter, IPython will output the doc string for this function and a short description for each argument. But let's go um, over every argument one by one in order to understand what they actually do. An argument is a piece of data that we pass to the function. We have not learned about functions or methods yet, but it is going to be covered soon. But for now, it is just a piece of data that we pass to the function and it does something with it. So let's just try and understand. The first argument is value, as you can see right here, and three dots. Three dots means that it can also receive multiple values and it is unlimited. So it means that you can actually print zero and then print hello. We're not limited for one data type and then also print true and then it prints zero hello and true that's really nice however as you can see between each argument or between each value it adds a space why a space and not i don't know a semicolon that's because the sep argument is set to be a space we can change this by using the keyword sep because this is the argument name and then define it to be a semicolon. Afterwards, the space becomes a semicolon. That's very nice. We can also divide these words with triple space or with a spatial character named tab, which is backslash t. As you can see, uh, it aligns, um, it aligns uh, the arguments uh, with the same spacing uh, with multiple lines, if we'll have two print functions, the semicolon actually tells Python um, to use this print function as a separate line and this f uh, print function as a separate line, and then print zero, um, shorter string, and false. And then the sep will also be a tab. So as you can see, it aligns all the values um, like a chart. That's very nice. <clears throat> Let's go back to the do documentation. So we said that value and three dots means that actually uh, that we can actually supply multiple values, and the separator or the sep actually defines the uh, the string that will be inserted um, between uh, each value. Next, we've got the argument end that uh, actually uh, actually defines the string that will be insert in the end at the end of the uh, of our values let's say we print hello and then pre print by by so this will output hello and by but we can say that the end will not be a new line however it will be omg and then it will actually output OMG and as you can see right here we have a new line but right here we do not have a new line and if we use two print functions print hello and the end will be um, let's say a dot and then we'll use another print function that says I don't know by and then we print it so we can see hello dot by. That's really nice. And the other two arguments are file, which means where we want to print. Sys dot std out means our screen. We can also uh, we can actually uh, pass any file like object. This is a very I don't know, complicated subject for now. Um, I'm not going to cover it. It will be covered in the future episodes and whether we want to flush um, the file-like object that we've just written to. We can flush the file or flush the socket, uh, but I'm not going to cover it right now, so uh, we're, we're, we're only talking about the values, 
the separator and the end marker. That's great. Now um, let's talk about getting input from the user. Let's say I want to get a simple string. So all I need to do is write, let's say name equals input, and that's it. Now it waits for me to actually write something. So let's say my name is Goku. So name will be equal to Goku. That's really nice. We can also add a prompt. Enter your name. And then, as you can see, it prints enter your name, and then I'll use Goku, and my name will be Goku. Let's actually use the question mark for input, and we can see that it all only gets a prompt. Let's leave this um, slash for now. It only gets a prompt. And you can actually uh, recast or cast um, the input to whatever type you want. Let's say you want to get a number, so num will be equal to int of input and the prompt will be enter a number and then enter a number, let's say 5 as you can see num is 5 and if we'll use the function type that we've learned about type of num is int if we remove the cast and let's say 5, so num is now 5, but type of num is string. You can cast to any data type you want, but make sure that you actually get a data type that can be converted to the data type you're interested in. Because int of 5 is 5, but int of a is nothing, because a is not a number. Uh, furthermore, you can also, let's say, cast to float. 5 to float will be equal to 5.0, but let's say, I don't know, 5a cannot be casted to float. And bool is tricky because bool um, is true whenever the string, the string length is greater than, than 0. This one will be equal to false. However, this is very confusing because you would expect that false will be translated to false, but it, it is actually a string with multiple uh, characters, not zero characters, so it is translated to true. Um, so that's about casting, and that's about getting an input and printing it. Oh, by the way, you can also print um, variables. And you can also print some logic about numbers. And you, you can print anything. So, yeah, that was the lesson. It's pretty easy. Um, but it is important in order for us to um, just keep going with the guides. Uh, but I've got some homework for you. It will be updated in episode 3 folder, uh, like all the other episodes. Uh, I've got a main.py here that should help you to understand what I've done in this lesson, if you forgot. Um, you can um, enter some strings, and then enter an integer, and enter a float, and that's it. And if you want to see the source code, it's right here. Just some printing and using the separator and the end and casting and everything we've just covered. And the homework should be uh, pretty easy. Um, the last one is pretty tricky. Uh, so go over it and to understand if you know what I'm talking about. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment sections below. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.